Hey guys, Zot here and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be getting you up to date on 8.3 Demon Hunter inside of Arena. This guide has been put together with Fuseton. Those of you who haven't heard of him, Fuseton is a multi rank 1 Demon Hunter on EU, considered by many one of the best Demon Hunters in the world gaining a respectable 4th place in the recent AWC Cup. In this guide we're going to be including an update on talents, essences, azurite choices, trinkets and covering the new corruption mechanic, finishing it off by going over your rotation and playstyle inside of Arena. Let's get straight into it then, starting off as always with the talent section. What we do is we start off with a good baseline and then cover any adaptations that you'll want to make depending on matchups and compositions. So a good talent baseline will look like this, Demonic Appetite, Immolation Aura, Trial of Ruin, Soul Rending, First Blood, Fell Eruption and finally Demonic. Now there are two talents you'll want to change depending on matchups, which is swapping the level 99 row from Demonic Appetite to Foul Blade and then the level 100 row from Immolation Aura to Demon Blades. What swapping these two talents accomplishes is it gives you a lot more mobility. So think classes like Restoration Droid or Miss Weaver or even Mages, just any time that you're going to be struggling for uptime. What you sacrifice by swapping these two talents is a little bit of damage and self healing. But if you can't reach your target, this spec will help you with that. As for the rest of your talents, for PvP they're set in stone and it's not recommended to swap between any of them. Okay, so PvP talents next. Once again, let's establish a good baseline, although we're going to have a lot more options when it comes to PvP talents. For a baseline, we recommend going Mana Rift, Detainment and Cover of Darkness, but let's cover why and what other options there are. Our first recommended talent is Mana Rift. Obviously, this is a very good pick. Any time that your win condition is Mana, then this is of course core for that. A talent you'll rarely play without unless you're looking just for raw damage, or it's going to be too difficult to secure burns. When picking up Mana Rift, a must-have talent is Detainment. This allows you to land Mana Rifts off your Imprison, resulting in far more burns during a game. You can of course swap this out when you get far more use out of an alternative talent, and then keep your Imprison just for CC. Cover of Darkness is just an all-around good talent, providing a great defensive for both yourself and your team, improving your darkness by 50%. This can be exchanged when you're not worried about burst damage or just need more raw damage. Whilst the other options you'll often want to consider are firstly rain from above. This has multiple uses. It's great damage versus anything. Whilst you're up in the air, you can foul launch your enemies that deals insane damage. Alternatively, whilst up in the air, you can't be hit by melee attacks meaning this is actually a very good defensive versus cleaves. Fly up in the air, do good damage and take none yourself. Reverse magic is great whenever you can get use out of it, often swapped for either detainment or cover of darkness. Reverse magic is extremely powerful versus teams that look to crowd control, as you can remove magic crowd control effects from your healer. Alternatively, it's great versus dot cleaves like shadow play where you can dispel all of your team's dots with the press of a button. Now, these next talents are a little more niche, but are still good in some situations. Solitude is primarily for 2v2. This is a great damage option where you're going to be isolated, either chasing healers or sitting on a caster for example. And our final option is Unending Hatred. This can be picked up as a more offensive option versus casters with high dot damage. So think things like Shadow Priest or Warlocks. This is going to give you insane fury generation. You can pick this up if you're just looking to pump out the damage. Up next we've got Essences. With 8.3 we saw the release of some new ones along with another minor slot, allowing us to now wear free with neck level 75. Starting with major Essences, you have two main options. Most commonly you'll want Breath of the Dying. Breath of the Dying is just really good damage, hits hard, gives you finishing power and just all around the best by far offensively. The other option though is Conflict and Strife. Offensively this isn't great, it gives access to demonic origins, which as a talent itself is not great. The reason you would consider Conflict and Strife though is for the added versatility effect whilst you're stunned. This can often be essential versus compositions like Rogue Mage who are looking to kill you inside of stuns. For your free miners, first you'll want either one of the two essences we just covered that you're not using as your major for that game. So if you have Breath Major, take Conflict Miner. 
If you have Conflict Major, take Breath Miner. Easy enough. And then to pair with either Conflict or Breath, you'll want Crucible or Flame Miner. This is just an all around good damage option, providing a good chunk of free damage throughout the game. And then for your last Miner, you've got two options, either Vision of Perfection or Memory of Lucid Dreams. Vision of Perfection is great when you expect the game to be drawn out. This will give you a shorter cooldown on your long metamorphosis, meaning you'll get it back sooner and be able to close out the game. Whereas Memory of Lucid Dreams is for those faster games where you think you'll only get the one meta use, providing you just with more fury throughout the game. Now that we have talents and essences covered, let's move on to Gearin, where we cover stat priority, Azerite traits, corruption and trinkets, along with any must obtain pieces of gear. Starting off with stat priority, nothing much has changed. You'll for the most part want both haste and versatility, with haste being prio until you reach around 22.5%, then you'll want to focus on versatility, with mastery being a lot weaker and critical strike unlike in PvE should be avoided as it's nerfed by 50% inside of arena. In regards to Azerite traits, demon hunters are pretty unique. There are 4 must have 1 point wonder traits, with 1 must have minor. What I mean by this is that you need to have 1 chaotic transformation, 1 eyes of rage, 1 first blade, 1 revolving blade, and then 1 burning soul, which is the minor trait. All 5 of these traits have a unique effect attached to them that doesn't stack, meaning having at least one of them is going to be vital. This then leaves you with 2 open major slots, these of which don't really matter too much, although the best ones are heart of darkness or first in blades, with heart of darkness being the best due to it not being nerfed inside of PvP by 50% like all other traits. Ok, so what pieces do you want to aim to farm to obtain this trait setup? Well, the Helm is from PvP. The Corrupted Gladiator's Leather Helm gives you 1 Revolving, 1 Firsting, and even a Burning Soul, checking off 3 of your must have traits. Then for shoulders, the Pauldrons of Great Convergence, coming from the last boss in the new raid Nazoth. These have Eyes of Rage and Heart of Darkness checking off another of our 5 must have traits. Lastly, the chest is once again from the new raid. The tortured flesh beast Karas comes from the penultimate boss Carapace, which has chaotic transformation and heart of darkness. With these 3 Azerites, you've got all 5 must have traits covered, plus 2 heart of darkness. A perfect setup. Trinkets are now an integral part of Gearin, with select trinkets being incredibly important to have. For demon hunters, the two you want to focus on obtaining are the Segment of Drestagath and the Remote Guidance Device. These two trinkets, when used, deal insane amounts of damage, giving you a ton more kill potential, while some easier to obtain ones are a badge or an insignia, both of which give a passive boost to Versa and then an on-use or proc agility. And then for those scenarios where you need some added defense, a Corrupted Gladiator's Emblem or a safeguard are great options. It's also worth noting, currently the best weapon for demon hunters, if not using corrupted ones, are the bile stained Krog tusks from the mythic Underrock. The proc on these weapons stacks up and deals insane damage. Picture them almost as free corruption. Up next, we've got everybody's favourite new addition to the game, corruption. Insane RNG, balanced damage, and just all around fun. There is one corruption that reigns supreme above all others when it comes to damage and that's of course Gushing Wound. This is just insane. For 15 corruption it has the potential to do almost as much damage as 75 corruption worth of infinite stars. Gushing Wound is hands down your best by far, but if you're not lucky enough to have this, a more easily obtained option is the Undurant Caress, providing you with the Lash of the Void corruption. Alternatively, Infinite Stars or Twisted Appendage are okay, a little more RNG and recently nerfed, but still can do decent damage. Overall though, if you've not got any damage in Corruption, Surge in Vitality giving you a proc versatility on hit, or Versatile giving you a percent bonus to your versatility rating, provide nice boosts to your favoured stat. Alright then, now we've covered everything in terms of gearing and setting up your character ready for arena, let's now cover rotation. The rotation for a demon hunter in PvP is pretty simple, there's no arguing, but there are a few things you can do to improve your damage. First is making sure to utilise consume magic on cooldown. This not only removes a buff from your opponent and gives you fury, but with the minor you'll also gain a soul fragment. You'll also never want to let your fury bar cap, 
this can waste a lot of potential damage. So if you're a high fury, make sure to spend it on Chaos Strike, Blade Dance or I-Beam. With that mentioned though, when looking to go into Metamorphosis with I-Beam, you should always be looking to pull fury beforehand. Pressing I-Beam of course will grant you a shortened Metamorphosis due to the talent Demonic, in turn giving you access to Annihilation. Your goal is to get as many of these off during your meta as you can, and a full fury bar helps with exactly that. Also, when playing with the PvP talent Rain From Above, you should always look to combine this with Metamorphosis, as it benefits greatly from the added haste. This will allow you to get a lot more foul lances off whilst inside of the air. This, of course, is if you're using Rain From Above offensively. And the last tip for maximising your damage is something easily overlooked, and that's making sure to always first use Blade Dance and Eye Beam before using your big Metamorphosis. This is due to your Azerite trait Chaotic Transformation, as once you use Meta, these cooldowns will both reset, maximising your damage. Last up, we've got Playstyle. Burning through the enemy healer's mana is often a win condition of Demon Hunter compositions. Knowing how you can maximise mana rifts can greatly speed this process up. Generally speaking, mana rift costs 50 fury, with Fall Eruption costing 10. This means before going for a burn, you'll first need at least 60 fury. If you want to burn with Chaos Nova, it costs 30 fury. So, in total, you'll need 80 fury. And if you want to burn with Detainment, you'll only need the 50 fury required for mana rift. First though, what you need to do is you need to identify the enemy healer's race and trinket. If the enemy healer is an orc or playing with the PvP talent Relentless, there are some things you need to know. To land a mana rift inside of a single stun, you're going to need to be inside of Metamorphosis. The increased haste will allow you to land a burn despite the duration of the stun being reduced. If you however do not have meta ready or enough haste to burn inside of a single stun, you're going to have to chain your Fall Eruption and Chaos Nova. Alternatively, using Vengeful Retreat can help to secure Mana Rift versus certain healers, as it slows them by 70% for 3 seconds. This is great versus Priests. The Trinket choice will also affect when you should burn during your detainment. If the healer is relentless, you need to burn after 1.5 seconds. If they're not, you burn after 2.5 seconds. As a Demon Hunter, a lot of your cooldowns actually have multiple uses. Let's take Blade Dance for an example. This, to maximise your damage, should ideally just be used off cooldown. Although, Blade Dance, when activated, will dodge any incoming attack for 1 second. Now, this also includes stuns. So, if you notice you're being trained by a DPS and you can see their stun shortly off cooldown, it's worth delaying Blade Dance to try and immune that stun. The same goes for Metamorphosis, but this time it's even stronger, as when used, Metamorphosis makes you immune to everything. Pop in Meta when you predict a stun incoming, see a Storm Bolt in the air, a Chaos Bolt in the air, or even a Greater Byroblast is about to hit you, or even a Touch of Death is about to proc. Metamorphosis will immune it all. As mentioned beforehand, it's worth noting due to the Chaotic Transformation talent, you can actually chain both Blade Dance and Metamorphosis, making you immune for an extended period of time. Simply Blade Dance, followed up with Meta, and then Blade Dance again. You're immune for literally 4 seconds. Rain From Above, when selected as a PvP talent, also can be used to this effect. Whilst you can still take damage from ranged attacks, Flying into the air will make you immune to all physical damage, and of course crowd control, all whilst doing insane damage up there. Now it's fair to say that Demon Hunter is one of the most mobile melee specs in the game, so you should be making the most out of it when it comes to arena games. You have access to Foul Rush, a 10 second cooldown with 2 charges that covers quite a lot of distance instantly, Vengeful Retreat which gives a powerful snare to nearby opponents as well as a leap back away from the enemies, as well as also Foul Blade when you're taking the talent, that will charge towards your target when in range. This allows you to be able to swap targets quickly, so things like swapping on healing over time effects or strong defensive cooldowns can be done with ease, going back and forth between multiple targets. This mobility can also be utilised in kiting enemies to avoid damage, either just Foul Rushing away to avoid some melee damage, Foul rushing behind pillars to avoid casts and damage, or even just dashing through your opponent on casts like Greater Pyroblast or Chaos Bolt. As mentioned, a common win condition for Demon Hunters is mana. Your mobility is also key to this, quickly swapping to healers to burn and then coming back to your main target. 
Furthermore, you will also need your mobility in order to stop drinks. Keeping an eye on a healer trying to drop combat and using your mobility to keep them is vital to securing that win condition. Demon Hunter brings a lot of defensives for both themselves and their team. Darkness is something you always need to be ready to use. This can, if you're playing with the cover of Darkness PvP talent, be an extremely strong defensive for either yourself or your team. If you expect a setup to happen onto your teammate, make sure you're in range or have the mobility available to quickly get over to them and use this ability. The same goes for reverse magic, once more having a positional requirement. This means you're going to have to once more either save your mobility or make sure you're positioned near your healer in order to dispel them from important crowd control effects. Blur, on the other hand, doesn't require any positional requirements. It increases your dodge by 50% as well as reducing all the damage you take by 35%. Demon Hunters are unique in the fact that they can dodge from behind, so it doesn't matter if you're facing the targets or not, like with Evasion. Blur, as it increases your dodge chance, can also be used to dodge stuns like Kidney Shot and Leg Sweep. Okay then guys, that brings this Demon Hunter 8.3 update to an end. Hope this was useful and as always be sure to plus skill if you enjoyed and if you do have any more questions, don't be afraid to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.